I want to talk with you about, about giving thanks to God always. Giving thanks to God always. We, we began a mini-series last week. We'll wrap it up this week. Um, but the message is all about having an attitude of gratitude in all seasons. Attitude of gratitude in all seasons. Now, Matthew Henry, hear this, uh, famous Bible scholar. He wrote in his diary several notes on thanksgiving to God. He began first, he wrote, he says, I'm thankful to God because I have never been robbed. Well, that's a good reason to thank God, isn't that? Then another time later, he wrote this. He says, I'm thankful to God because although I was robbed and they took my purse, they did not take my life. Thankful to God. Later in life, he got robbed again. And he wrote this. He says, let me be thankful that although they took everything I had, it wasn't that much. Well, the fourth time he got robbed again. And he wrote that, I thank God because it was I who was robbed and not I who robbed. So in all seasons, you can be thankful to God. So in this season of thanks, I, I want to share with you from God's word how you can make Thanksgiving at just a different time. Not just the cornbread and the mashed potatoes and the turkey and the ham. And I hope you had your fill of it. But it's, it goes beyond that. Uh, God wants us to give thanks to him always. And the big idea, if you come to this church, we, want, we sort of start with a big idea so that you can follow along. And, and the, so the big idea is, is up on the screen. It's is, is right here on your sermon outline. Let's, re let's read that together. Big idea for today's message is that what? I must give thanks to God always for his word. Kindness and protection. Because everything I have and will have comes from God and belongs to who? God. I've got to thank God always for his kindness, his goodness. Because everything I have, everything I will have, belongs to God and it comes from God. And it starts by realizing this fact that everything you are and everything you will be and everything you own comes from God. Without God, you and I will be nothing in life. And because of this, like Matthew Henry, whether you are robbed, right? Whether you, a second time, a third time, a fourth time, no matter what happens, you will have an attitude of gratitude. Because in all seasons, God is good to you. We sang a song, God is good all the time, all the time is good. It's not just a cliche in Christian dome. If you walk with God anytime, you know that had it not been the goodness of God, you're not going to be here today. Here's what the Bible tells us in 1 Chronicles 29, 6. 1 Chronicles 29, 16. Look at this. Is this what? Everything has come from you, God, and everything belongs to you. Now, you see, everything, repeat it twice. And if you've been in this church, one of the ways to be able to understand the Bible is look at what has been repeated. That's the key word. Everything. Everything. Everything you have comes from who? Everything belongs to who? God is the giver and the owner of all things. Everything I have comes from God. If God had not created you, you will be nothing. You wouldn't even exist at all. You didn't create yourself. If you didn't have God in your life, you will have nothing. So it all starts with God. And so when we start saying, how can I give my thanks to God or what can I be thankful for? Really, it is to thank God for the Bible says what? Everything. Everything. Right? Now, oftentimes we want to look across the shoulder. We're going to look at our neighbors. We want to look at somebody's car, somebody's job, somebody's look, somebody's family, and then get sad and miserable. But God says, you, your whole life, you can thank God for what? Everything. Everything has come from God. And everything belongs to him. Now, I forget that you didn't want to wait around all day for this sermon to end by, uh, by listing everything that we ought to be thankful for. So, I picked four of the big ones. <laughs> four of the things that capture everything that God does for us that we ought to express our thanksgiving always. Always. Look at what the Apostle Paul tells us uh, in Ephesians 5.20. Read that with me. He says what? 
always thank God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, they tell us this season we're going in is the most depressed season, right? Then to the end of the year, we get into what could have, should have happened. You say, look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me. We get miserable, we get sad. Look at me, look at me, look at my job, look at my family, look at my health, look at my finances and so forth. Look at all the goals, look at all the ambitions that I wanted as coming. And then we, 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 we just fall into what? The worries of yesteryear and the fears of tomorrow. And so everything in this season is shot. We, we, we just get into a funk. But God is saying, hey, always thank God, the Father, for what? Everything. <laughs> In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So what is everything? Again, I, 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 we could spend all day. <laughs> but I want to give you the big four. How we can always thank God. And that big four will encapsulate everything we can be thankful for. And then at the end, what I'll do is I'll show you how you can actually express your thanksgiving to God. For this big four that encompasses everything that God's done for you. So let's go into here. The, the top four priorities. Why we ought to thank God always. The first is this. That I can always thank God for what? The grace he has shown me. One more time. The grace he has shown me. I can always thank God for the grace he has shown me. Ephesians 2.8. Here's what the Bible says. It says what? You have been what? Saved by grace through believing. You did not save yourself. It was a gift from God. When somebody gives you an awesome gift, what do you do? You thank them. So when God says, look, I've given you a gift. You, you didn't earn it. You don't deserve it. You, you can buy it. You can bribe and get it. It's not based on your status, your race, your age, anything you've done. It's a free gift of Almighty God. You ought to what? Live in perpetual thanksgiving to God. Grace. You've been saved by grace. The fact that as a child of God, when you said yes to Jesus, his free gift of salvation, he transferred you from hell, doom, and domination. <laughs> you are a child of God. You don't belong to the devil anymore. You belong to Almighty God. You are adapted into the family of God. Every day you wake up, you always say, thank God. Grace is what? Is what? God's grace at Christ's expense. Grace came by way of Christ. Grace is everything God does for you, even though you didn't deserve it. The air you breathe is God's grace. Your health is what? God's grace. Your family is what? God's grace. You are alive today because of what? God's grace. If you have a job, it's because of what? God's grace. Everything God does in you and through you and for you and to you is by his grace. And say, so start right there. Be in a place of thanksgiving because of God's grace. Not because you've earned it or you deserve it. <laughs> Not because you work for it. Listen, others, others are working so hard for it. And they're missing it, right? <laughs> but God's given to you and I as a free gift. And that's the greatest gift of all, salvation, salvation. The greatest gift of all, that the gift that keeps giving, everlasting life. He says, when you believe, I give you everlasting life. And when God has given you something that's eternal, something that's everlasting, it means it never ends. How long should you thank God for something that never ends? Forever. So we can thank God always for the grace that he's shown to me. He's shown to me. Now, we prayed this earlier in Psalm, Psalm 103. If you're just a little fuzzy about it, well, how can I really thank God for the grace He's shown unto me? Here are nine elements of God's grace to you that you ought to be thankful for. Psalm 103, verse 2 to 3. Read that with me. He says, well, I will not forget the glorious things God does for me. He forgives all my sins. He heals me. He ransoms me from hell. He surrounds me with love. He fills my life with good things. He is merciful and tender kind towards those who don't deserve. He is slow to get angry. He never bears a grudge. He hasn't punished us as we deserve for our sins. Nine elements of God's grace freely given to you. And God says, don't forget it. Don't forget. Always remember it. And it says, number one is this. <laughs> Number one is God's forgiveness. He forgives all my sins. Without the blood of Jesus that forgives you, you will be saddled with guilt, with shame. God's forgiving grace. He heals me. God's healing grace that strengthens you. We live 
in the land of the dying. Everything around us is dying, is getting weaker. We start strong and finish weak. But God is the, the source of our life. He's our pillar. He's our strength. And so he says, I am what? Fixing what is broken in your life. I am your healer. And so you ought to thank me. Thank me. I'm healing your marriage, your finances, your job, your kids, your health, glory to God, everything that concerns you. I am healing and restoring it in Jesus. Oh, if you receive that, say amen. And you ought to be thankful to God for his what? Healing grace. He says, he, he ransoms me from hell. If the devil had his way, you, you will be dead. I mean, is there any doubt about that? He said, no, 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 I take vitamins every day. I will be alive. Knock yourself out with your vitamins. <laughs> he ransoms me from hell. He means God says, I will deliver you from the enemy. Oh, that's number four. Number four sorry. He surrounds me with love. We sang a song, the Father's love. Good, good Father. Special love for us. How about this? Filling your life with good things. Number five, his provision. Number six, he's merciful. He's merciful. Oh, my Lord. I was, God doesn't treat you with what you deserve. Oh, Jesus. Number six, he says he's tender. In other words, God is kind to you. This kind, has God been kind to you? He says, don't forget that. Don't forget. If people had the, if people had the way in your life, you won't be where you are. <laughs> they look at you and they wonder, why you? Why are you? Why are you here right now? In this space of your life, because God has been kind, merciful. Like he says, you ought to think. You ought to think. Listen, I mean, if you think life is not good to you, folks will love to have your life. With all your problems you think you have. So be thankful for God's word. Kindness. It says also be thankful for his compassion. He says what well, he doesn't treat us with what we deserve, but he's slow to anger. He never bears a grudge. Oh, don't you think, aren't you grateful that God doesn't bear a grudge? <laughs> Amen. Bear a grudge. Have you ever heard somebody says, I will never forgive them? <laughs> God is not like that. Oh. He doesn't bear a grudge. Aren't you thankful for that? <laughs> Glory to God. He says he doesn't punish us as our, our sins deserve. matter what, God shows us faith. So I can always be thankful to God for his word, his grace, his grace that's bestowed upon me. Now, if you don't understand God's grace, if your heart doesn't explode with thanksgiving because of God's grace, then you don't understand God's grace. Let me summarize it. Without the grace of God, you would be hopeless. One more time. Hopeless. Without God's grace, there will be no meaning in your life. No purpose for your life. Instead, here's what's going to happen. You're going to be filled with fear, with bitterness, with worry, with regrets, and there's nothing you could do to get rid of it. Because everybody at the sound of my voice, you've had challenges, you've got problems, you've got weakness, you've got failures. I mean, there are a lot of skeletons in my closet, but glory to God, I can live thankfully and joyfully. Why? Because of the grace of God. No regrets. No fear, no bitterness, no worry. I have meaning and purpose and significance in life. Why? Because of the grace of God. My past is not my present. And my present doesn't dictate my future. Why? Because of the grace of God. Without grace, you will have no hope. Zero hope. Without grace, you'll be heading for hell. And you feel that this world is a hell here on earth. But God comes in and says, hey, you have been saved by grace through faith in Christ Jesus. And this is my gift to you. Therefore, you can thank God every day for his grace. If you are thankful, say amen to that. Now the second thing that you can thank God always, I can thank God always for what? The plans he has for me. Now your life is not an accident. That it doesn't matter what your parents did. They may not have planned you, but God planned you. 
You were made for a reason. You were made for a purpose. God's got a plan for you. If you are alive and breathing and your heart is going and your pulse is beating, it means that God still has a plan for your life. And you can be thankful for God. And he says the plan that he has for us is a good plan. It's not a plan you have to worry about. It's not a plan that you have to be afraid or anxious about. It's a good plan. Now, Jeremiah tells us this about the plan of God. And notice that four times God use, uses the word you. This is a personal letter, a personal word for you. Four times he says, you, 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 you. Read it together. Look at Jeremiah 29, 11. He says what? For I know the plans I have for who? You, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper who? You. And not to harm who? You. Plans to give who? You. Hope and a future. You, 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 you. And he says, I've got a plan for you. And he talks about these three times. He uses the word plans. I have what? Plans I have for you. Plans to prosper you. Plans to give you this. I mean, God gets overdoses on redundance. He doesn't want you to miss it. He does it. He says, you, 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 you. He says, what is it that concerns me? I've got plans. I've got plans. I've got plans. And you ought to be thankful God. God has a plan for your life. Glory to Almighty God. And you and I ought to know that God's plan is so great that he can even take your mistakes, <laughs> your faults, your failures, and all the things that others have done to you or are planning to do in your life. He can take it, smash it all together, and weave that into his good plan for your life. <laughs> now hear this. God's plan is not always all happy. It's not always all comfortable. His plan includes some pain in your life sometimes. His plan includes some disappointments. His plan includes some discipline. And it's the love of God that disciplines us. It's not punish us, but when we are on the wrong path, God will close some doors to try to narrow our options so we can get right on track with him. His plans also involve some unanswered prayers because if God answered all the desires of your heart, it will be disastrous because your heart is so wicked. But look at the plans that he says. What, what kind of plans is he talking about? He says, I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. They are plans to do what? Prosper you. Plans not to what? Harm you. Plans to give you what? Hope. And if, who doesn't want that? Who, who doesn't want that? I want it. I want it for you too. I want God's plans for your life to prosper you. Plans to give you hope. Plans to give you a future. And plans not to harm you. Glory to God. So you can thank God 24-7 every day of your waking life for God's plans for your life. Glory to God. While you don't know what tomorrow will bring, God knows it all. And he says, I got good plans for you. The Hebrew word for plans is shalom. It means completeness, soundness, welfare, prosperity. Amen. He says, that, 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 that's what I'm cooking up. That's what I'm working around the corner. So I can always thank God because of the grace he's shown to me. I can always thank God because of the plans that he has already worked out in my life. He's working out today and the ones that will come to pass tomorrow. Glory to Almighty God. And the more you understand this, you want to be in the center of God's plan. You don't want to run away from God. You want to run towards God. Because it is in the center of God that your true potential comes out. The reason God created you and has kept you alive because he's not finished with you. The closer you are to God, he enacts his good plans, his prosperous plans for your life. And you ought to be thankful that well, you may not know what's going on. You may not know what to do with in certain situations in your life. God knows it all. And he's working it all out for you, good. So I can always thank God, give thanks to God always for the grace he's shown me. I can always thank God for the plans that he's working out in my life. Here's the third reason why you can always be thankful to God beyond the turkey 
and the cornbread and the green beans and whatever it is that you threw on top of that you can always thank God for what the changes he's making me oh this is a good one this is a good one <laughs> oh are you glad as a child of God that you're not the same person you were you're not the same person you were has God making any changes in your life do you like the new you the better you than you were before <laughs> God saw your potential when no one saw it. And he's molding you, molding you. He's not finished with you. He's not, tell somebody, I'm a work in progress. Tell somebody, I'm a what? I'm a work in progress. And while others wrote you off, when they looked at you as a little girl, a little boy, they wrote you off. They never thought, they never thought any good would come out of your life. They looked at you and they compared you with everybody else. God saw the potential in you. Glory to God. And he began a transformation process in you. If you like where you are right now, lift your hand and thank God. Oh God, he's brought you from a mighty long way. He's brought me from a mighty long way. But he's not finished all. He's not finished to glory to almighty God so I can be thankful 24-7 God saw you as a diamond in the rough the moment you became a believer he started making changes in your life he started his personal improvement program chipping away at your life Removing all the rough edges, all the ancestral, traditional stuff, the things that were part of your background, your upbringing, things that you saw, things that were limiting, things that were prohibitive, things that were, oh, holding you back. God began to chip, chip away at that. Glory to God. Oh, my Lord. Has it, oh God, has anyone seen the journey that God has brought you from? He's brought you from a mighty long way. You ought to just praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I can think of me, a young boy walking down the streets of Sopon. Little town Sopon. You can go around my little town in about 30 minutes and still come back to the same place. <laughs> if you have a fast running car, not a big place, but a Lord. Hey Amen. It's a difference maker. The Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. He loves you the way you are when you came to Him, but God will not leave you the way you are. Glory to God. So you ought to thank him for the changes he's made and what he's still doing in your life. He's not finished though. He's not finished. Look at Philippians 2.13. <laughs> you all love this. You ought to thank God for that. Amen. Read that with me. Say what? For God is what? Working in you. What is God doing? What is he God doing? Giving you the desire to obey him and the power to do what pleases him. He's putting desires in your heart. He's taking away all the limiting, crooked, selfish, prideful, fearful, worrisome, everything that you are scared of, you are worried of, everything that you are telling yourself you can't do, all the voices that you've heard in your heart and your mind that is telling you you not amount to anything. God says, I am putting divine desires in your heart to follow my path. Not only that, I'm giving you the power to implement it. See, God never asks you to do something without giving you the power to do it. Oh, in my journey as a pastor, I have seen some radical transformation of lives. Radical transformation that no human being, no program, no therapy could have ever possibly done. And you ought to be thankful for that. You see, I think that the, 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 um, the, the longer we are uh, as Christians, the more we forget how good this deal is that we've got. We actually forget to live. We actually forget how life is like. Life is like without hope. We forget how life is like without help. We forget how life is like without God's power, without God's presence, without God's peace, without God's protection. We forget it. 
But there are people who are living without hope, without God's love, God's power, God's presence, God's peace, God's protection over their life. And how miserable, how lost that life is. And God is saying, I am working in you, working in you to give you the desire and the power. And when you come to God, he starts changing you. He starts, he, he's not trying to make you like your brother, your friend, your mom, your dad, a movie star, some kind of YouTube influencer. He's not trying to make you like that. Look at what the Bible is saying. Second Corinthians 3.18, it says, was, As the Spirit of the Lord works within us, us, we become what more and more like what Christ do you see what the goal is the ma oh my goodness you say I want to be like this movie star forget about that movie star if you knew their life you wouldn't want it so you want to thank God for the changes he's making in you because what he's making you what more and more like who <laughs> it's a gradual process transformation process which will all come together where the Bible says that when we see Jesus on that day face to face we will be like him but gradually he's molding our hearts to want to love him to trust him to obey him to follow him and he's chipping on the blocks of our life moment by moment don't oppose God's transformation don't say well I just don't want to change I want to be just the way I was Really? You want to be like the way you were? Knock yourself out. Knock yourself out. <laughs> your past is not your present. Your present. God is working in you to change you to become what? More and more like Christ. I don't want to go back to the way things used to be. I don't want to go back. Glory to Almighty God. Because God is in the process of working in me to make me the spirit of the Lord. Spirit of Jesus is working in you and me as his children to make us more and more like, oh my goodness. So that we, we talk like God, we think like God, we act like God. Glory to God. And God says, imitate me. Be imitators of God. So you and I can be thankful of God's life changing, walking us of his transforming power. <laughs> I should always thank God for the grace he's shown to me. I should always thank God. For the changes he's making in me. I should be grateful to God for his plans that he has for my life. Let me give you one more. We should be thankful to God. Right. I can always thank God for what? The home he's prepared for me. Home he's prepared for me. Amen. Amen. <laughs> now one of the greatest things that most people fear is death. As a child of God you should never fear death. You should never fear death because death is the gateway to paradise. Death is the gateway to everlasting life. Death is the gateway to the presence of God. And Jesus did not save you so that you will live here forever. He didn't create you to live here forever. Look at your body. Go to nursing homes. Look at everything else around you. We were never created to be here forever. That's not the way it's supposed to work. We were created to be here for a while to learn to love God and to appreciate everything he's doing for us so that one day we'll be with him forever and ever and ever. And so aren't you thankful that you're not going to be here forever? Go to nursing homes. And you understand. If you've got a loved one who's, who's sick, who body isn't functioning right, you can understand what I'm talking about. Modern medicine, modern medicine cannot. The great blessing of God happens in heaven. It's not to keep you here forever and ever and ever. And so they, 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 what we can be thankful for that we will not be stuck here on this earth. It's a wicked world, isn't that? It's a pretty wicked world. And so we can be thankful for the home that God has prepared for us in heaven. Look at this amazing portion of scripture in 2 Corinthians 5 verse 1. Hear this. Look at this. It says what? We know that our body will be destroyed. Stop right there. He says, I'm too sad about that. No, 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 no. But Oh, the buts of the Bible. But 
When that happens, amen, God will have a house for us. It will not be a house made by human hands. Instead, it will be what? A home in heaven that will what? Last forever. Today, you are living in a house. When you close your eyes to this world, you'll be in the Father's home. Home. Forever. Every human being that was ever created, God made them not just for this time here on earth. We were made to live forever, either with God or away from God. As a believer, God says, hey, you ought to thank God that you're going home. A place where there's no pain, no sorrow, no debts, no evil, no sin, no sickness, no shame. A home not made by human hands. A home that is tailor-made by God himself. For you, glory to almighty God. And here's the exciting thing. It says, on the day where you close your eyes to this world, there will be no fear in your life. No matter where you're going to, Jesus says, I go to prepare a place for you. And when I'm done, I will come and take you myself. So that where I am, you'll be there forever. John 14. The day of your death will be the happiest day of your life. Because you're going to see Jesus face to face holding Walking you through the pearly gates of heaven. You say, oh, I'm, so, I'm going to be so afraid to die. No, 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 no. I've been in the presence of Christians who have passed away. Their body riddled with pain, riddled with sickness, going through all kinds of problems. But the minute they breathe their last, you can see their countenance. They've seen something. They've experienced something out of this world. We know that our body will be destroyed. We know. He says, you ought to know this. And this is what you ought to know also. The world doesn't know this, but you should know this. You should know that when that day happens, God will have a house for you. It will not just be a human house, but it will be what? A home in heaven. That will make your apartment, your home, your townhouse look like you are living in a garbage can. Love my home. The technology there is A1. <laughs> Knock yourself out with your French door, refrigerator, and your microwave, and your snazzy oven, and your dishwasher, and all those fancy technology. It says it will pale in comparison. Glory to Almighty God. What God has for you. <laughs> oh, I might speak preaching to somebody. And as Christians, you should never be afraid of the future. You see, you can be thank you can be really joyful in life when you're not afraid to die. When you are not afraid to die, you are really ready to live. When you're afraid to die, then guess what? When you have an accident, when the rain falls, when there's a storm, when you lose your job, when something happens, you, you glory to God. The enemy uses death to be able to scare believers, but God says has taken the mask off. You ought to know this. You ought to know this. Glory to Almighty God that the day you breathe your last will be the happiest day of your life. Because there's a home prepared in heaven for you. Here's what Jesus said about that home. Look at John 14, 2 to 3. Notice this. My father's house has many rooms. <laughs> hey, I'm going there to what? Prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also will be where I am. Four times the Bible uses the word you. Do you see the word you? Who is he talking to? You and me. I'm going to prepare a place for who? You. If I go and prepare a place for who? You. I'll come back and take who? you to be with me that who you also will be where I am he says heaven is what a prepared place ha have, have any of you had a surprise party before I've been around somebody who's had a surprise party there's planning preparation everything is done in the secret don't tell them about it it's what like, right this is what they like there's a decoy somebody who's trying to just try to distract them so forth so on and they show up it's like surprise they prepared for them Oh, I like this. This is my favorite cake. Imagine what God says. I'm preparing a place for who? You. Taylor made. You're going to go to heaven and says, oh, he knows me. Oh, he knows me. Look at what he has prepared for me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Heaven is a prepared place for who? You. 
specially tailor-made. Not all of us will have the same thing. Every single one will have something that's unique, that's special, that's tailor-made for you from the Father's heart. What a joy it is to wake up every day knowing that you are eternity bound. And the, and the joy and the satisfaction and the great hope and peace that is who will mind the journey when the journey leads home. How many of you have traveled and you're going somewhere fun, somewhere exciting, and there may be a little bit delayed, there may be traffic on the way. Have you ever flown? It's like there's a little turbulence in there, but you know you're going somewhere you like, somewhere that will be happy, somewhere that you really want to be there. You won't mind the journey when the journey is leading where? Home. Home. So we ought to be thankful. We ought to be thankful. You say, what's going to happen in heaven? It says heaven is going to be a boring place. It's not going to be an exciting place. Oh, no, 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 no. I don't have time to tell you everything about what heaven is, but here's something that you've got to understand. It says in heaven, four hours, four hours, what's going to happen in heaven? And one will be what? Reunited, rewarded, reassigned, and released. Reunited, your loved ones who have passed away in the Lord, you're going to see them face to face. Isn't it exciting that right here in this place, if you're a child of God, that we're going to be together forever and ever and ever? can't wait to see my mom. I miss my mom. I can't wait to see my dad. They believe as they brought me up in the faith and the love of Jesus Christ. I will see them face to face. There are some people I want to see. We'll be reunited. How many of you want to hang around with Abraham? <laughs> hang out with Peter? How about Mary Madeline? Say, hey. Mary, you old. <laughs> wow, wow. All these Bible characters that we talk about, that encourages us a lot. It says we'll be reunited. We'll be with them forever and ever and ever. In heaven, we'll be re rewarded. Everything that you've done in the name of God, God says what? We'll be what? Rewarded. There'll be crowns. There'll be benefits. There'll be rewards waiting for us. Oh, are you not looking forward to that? In heaven, we're going to be reassigned. You see pictures of heaven looking at snowflakes, and he says that we're going to be out there just floating around doing nothing. Ha! Huh? And we'll be reassigned. You're going to be doing something so fulfilling, so exciting, so amazing. You'll be reassigned. Glory to God. You're going to be in service of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Well, how many of you sometimes you do something that is, is you, you're so happy doing that, so fulfilled, and some things you do you're not happy about in heaven? Whatever God assigns to you, it will be so delightful. It will be so, you'll be busy. Doing something so fulfilling, so exciting, so significant, so amazing, so joyful. Glory to Almighty God. And in heaven you will be released. Released from pain, released from sickness, released from debt. How many of you look, sometimes you look at your, <laughs> man, I hope you're not looking at your credit report and see all the, all the debt that you have got, golly, look at my mortgage, look at this, my car note, my student loans, <laughs> is Biden going to pay that all off for me? It's like you'll be released, you'll be released uh, from every pain, every sickness, every debt, every obligation. Oh, my Lord. It's gone bye-bye. Who doesn't want to be there? And that's a big reason to thank God for looking far ahead at eternity. Eternity is going to be so exciting. So in closing, how should we really be thankful to God in practical terms? How should we pour out our thanksgiving to God? Right? We know why we should be thankful. Thankful to God for his grace. Thankful to God for the plans he's made for our life. Thankful to God for all the changes he's making in us. Thankful to God for the home he's prepared for us. So how does God tell us we should be thankful to God? First, we should be thankful to God by singing. Psalm 147 verse 7. Read out me. It says what? Sing out your thanks to the Lord. Sing praises to our God. Listen, when you come to church, even though you don't know, that's why we put the lyrics out there. Sing. Because God says, you express thanksgiving to me through singing. God has given us the gift of what? Singing. As, as human beings, we can sing out. This is not a concert. Though. Look at what the Bible says on this. Look at someone. I never wanted to. He says, I'm too shy. I'm too shy. I'm too shy. He says, what? Make what? A joyful what? So if somebody is singing off key, don't worry about that. They're not singing for your enjoyment. This is not a concert. It's what? Make a what? Joyful noise unto the Lord, ye lands. Come before his presence with what? Sing. So we express our thanksgiving to God for his grace. The changes he's making in us. Home is prepared in heaven. Right? All the changes he's making in us by what? 
expressing our song to him. Something happens when we sing, right? It's so powerful. Praise rejuvenates. Praise is a mood lifter. Do you believe that? Praise is a depression lifter. Praise chases the devil away. Now, secondly, also, we express, we express thanksgiving to God. God says, do it every day, always 24-7, by what? By what? Serving. The Hebrews 12, 20, he says, since we have a kingdom that nothing can destroy, let us please God by what? Serving him with thankful hearts. So we thank God by what? Serving. Now, I'm having a wonderful time today. You know why? I'm thanking God by serving. It's a great opportunity to use your gifts, your talents, your abilities, your passion to be able to serve God. God looks at them and says, oh my gosh, my child here is what's serving me. By the exercise of their gifts, their talents, their abilities, their strength that I gave them, everything comes from God, belongs to God. And we owe God an attitude. So you serve God with your gifts, your abilities, you're a, there's some things that you can do better than anyone in the world. Don't hold back. Because as you serve others, you're what? Thank you, Almighty God. Also, thank God by what? By what? Giving. He said, everything comes from God, belongs to God, right? Uh, look at Psalm 50, verse 14. He says, what? Give an offering to what? Show things. So I show things to God by what? Right? If you are stingy, he says, what? You've been ungrateful to God. <laughs> right? If you are Armstrong, you've been what? Because one way you express thanksgiving to God is what? He said, but Pastor Mike, I can't sing. My voice is horrible. I can't take a microphone. Well, you can harm a beat. You can serve God. You can give from what God has given you to the glory of Almighty God. You can be an extension of his hand. You can give gratitude. You can give thankfulness. You can give grace. You can give forgiveness. You can give mercy. You can give love. You can give financially. Glory to Almighty God. You can give, oh my Lord. He says when we give an offering, we are offering something that God has given us for somebody to the glory of God. Offering something for his work, his ministry, that the lights will come on, the doors will be open, that many will come into the saving grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He said, God said, says that and he says you are showing me thanks so we thank God because of his grace upon our life we thank God because of his plans we thank God because of the changes we thank God because of the home is given to us and how do we practically do that we practically do that by what singing by serving by giving last is what by what telling you ought to be a walking testimony. You and I should never be an undercover Christian where people in your family, in your neighborhood, on your job don't even know if you're a child of God. If they banned Christianity, they outlawed Christianity, will they, will they persecute you for that? Or you are working so hard to fit in with this world that no one will know that you're a child of God, that others will be shocked to know that you're a Christian. He says that's being ungrateful to Almighty God. For his grace, <laughs> everything he's doing for a lot. Look at this amazing portion of green. Isaiah 12, 4, he says what? Thank the Lord. Ha, praise his name. How? Tell the nations what he has done. Let them know how mighty he is. So you're not doing to brag on yourself. Oh. Let them think that you are bragging on yourself, but let them know. When your co-workers ask you, Find a way to tell them God will always create an opportunity for you to make himself famous. The reason he saved you, he's blessed you, he's working in your life. The reason he's doing great and awesome things so that you can become a living testimonial. You can become a billboard, an advertisement for Jesus. See, I'm, 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 I'm shy that they're going to judge me. Jesus says he will shy. To proclaim me before others, I'm going to be what? Shy to proclaim him before the angels in heaven. 
So this, we praise God. We ought to praise God always. We ought to do 24-7. There's so many reasons that you and I, he says, everything comes from God. Everything belongs to him. Always thank God for everything in the name of our Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ. Why? Because of his grace that he's shown me his plans, the changes he's making in me, the home he has, oh, my Lord, prepared for heaven. How should I 24-7 thank God? By singing, by serving, glory to almighty God. By giving an offering and by telling, 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 telling. I want to be a living billboard. Glory to Almighty God. Will you rise up and give a thanksgiving? Oh, offering to God. Tell God how much you thank him. How much you praise him. How much you glorify him. He's good all. He's good all. Glory to Almighty God. Father, we thank you. And I'd be you. We'll not be here. Oh, take a moment and just thank God. Here you are, thank God, thank God. Oh, my Lord, walk through everything. Thank God for his grace. Thank God for the changes he's making in you. Thank God for all the plans that he's worked out and many more that he's still working in your life. Thank God for heaven, for paradise. Glory to Almighty God, where death, death is not the end of your life. That is the gateway to paradise. Thank God. Glory to Almighty God. Oh, Jesus, we thank you. Papa, we thank you. Holy Spirit, we thank you. And Father, everyone in the sound of my voice right now, Thank you for the gift of salvation. Thank you for your grace, your mercy. Thank you for leading the way and bringing them into your presence. And thank you for all the open doors. Thank you for all your grace, your favor, your blessing you bestowed upon your life. And I pray, oh God, my Lord, that even now as they have gathered before you, that the rest of their life you mark that. You mark that, oh God, with more grace. You continue your transformation in their lives, Lord God Almighty. You bring changes upon them, Jesus. Take them where they've never been before, Lord God. Put an axe to the root. Whatever is not of you, take it far away. Transform their lives, oh God. Oh, that they are beaming like the sun. They are beaming like the sun. Make them the light of their world, the salt of their earth. Elevate them, God, my Lord. Single them out for greatness. Shine, Jesus, shine upon your people, Lord God Almighty. Bless the mighty God on this Thanksgiving season, going into the end of the year, oh God. Oh, my Lord. Set them up for greatness. Set them up, oh God, my Lord. Oh, the plans that you've made for them and act that unfold it, Lord God. Release those plans for their lives. Financial plans, relational plans, spiritual plans, emotional plans, vocational plans, oh God, my Lord. Every area of their life, Jesus, marshal that, oh God, overemphasize, implode their life with your good, perfect plans. The plans, oh my God, that to prosper them and to give them a hope in the future birth that right now into their lives in the name of Jesus. Every plan of the enemy oh my God, release it eliminate it in their lives oh God my Lord. Bless your people mighty God today. I've left them higher 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 in Jesus name oh God. Pray with me oh God I thank you for your many blessings today oh God so thankful for your grace undeserved unearned free gift from you I receive it so pour your grace upon my life in every area father you've got big plans for my life I desire it I receive it with thanksgiving my life is yours Holy Spirit change me transform me improve my life according to your good purposes and father when my time here on earth is over i want to be with you in heaven thank you lord help me now to express thanksgiving through song through giving through telling through serving i want to be sold out for you take my life and use it for your glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, my brother, my sister, anyone that's on my voice, if you've not received Christ as your Lord and Savior, will you pray this prayer with me? Very simple prayer. It says, as many as believed and received him, Jesus says, I give them the right, the authority to become children of God. Everything we've talked about right here belongs to God's children. Why don't you? Oh, my Lord, receive God's gift of salvation. Pray with me. Jesus, thank you for your blood. That sets me free. I don't understand it all. But I know you love me. 
that you came to die for my sins and give me your salvation so today I receive your precious gift of salvation save me I claim you today as my Lord and Savior from here on help me to love you to trust you and to follow you so that my life will bring glory to you and on the day my time here on earth is over please Lord I want to be with you in heaven <laughs> so come and take me to be in heaven with you forever in Jesus name Amen.